Howdy y'all, I'm Zachary Puckett, store manager of Ranch Right. It's part of the family of Right products. From everything to a new gearbox for your cutter, or a new pump for your air compressor, or hell, a ball for your trailer hitch, give us a call. We got the products you need to get the job done right. And today, we're gonna take all the work out of assembling a seven head disc cutter, except for the actual work. And while you sit back there in your underwear enjoying the cold one, just watch me and we'll show you how to assemble a brand new Ranch Right seven head disc cutter. We'll show you proper assembly techniques and tools needed from start to finish. From the time it arrives on your farm in the crate to the time you hook it up to your tractor and ready to work. Now come on now and enjoy your beer and watch us while we get her done for you. Remember, do it right or don't do it. Let's go get the job done. Now first thing you gonna do after you received your Ranch Right product and before the truck leaves, remember to inspect your crate for damages. Look for holes that parts may have fell out or busted wood that might have happened during the loading or unloading process. And do not sign for your crate if any damages are found. Send it back with the freight company and Ranch Right will send you a brand new one. So assuming your crate is whole and complete like this one, all you'll need now to start the uncrating process is a good old crowbar and a pair of tin snips. But remember, this is not a demolition project, so no chainsaw or dynamite needed to get in this crate. Just some good old know-how and a little bit of time. Now a good hand makes short work of this, but we trying to do it all Hollywood style, baby. When all else fails, hit it like you live. Like she owes you money. Hey, what, I busted in a lot of equipment, and this is the baddest crate ever. Not bad enough, apparently. After you get your crate disassembled, lay out all your parts for a visual inspection. You should have your mainframe that attaches to your cutter bar for the three-point of your tractor. You'll also be supplied with a drive shaft. Make sure the drive shaft's complete and has both ends of safety chains on it before you start. We also supply the front and rear curtain rods to hang your canvas curtain on the machine after assembly. We also supply canvas to cover your machine to protect the operator from flying projectiles. I like to leave my canvas out in the sunshine for a little bit to ease installation. Then we'll send you your front guard to protect the operator as well. And that attaches to your bottom skid plate on the first cutter head of your machine. We also sent a box of parts supplied, as shown here. And if you're looking for a parts list, you should find one somewhere on this, they told me it would be here, on this, this video somewhere, you'll find it. And remember to always use proper lifting techniques and the proper rigging when supporting this machine. Always have an operator sitting in the seat when you're using any type of lifting device because it's made by man, it can fail. As you see here, we got our machine supported by a strap being held up and we're gonna use our stand today as the original factory supplied kickstand for when the machine's in the stored position. Right now we have the stand pinned off in the stored position with the leg kicked out. So to support the weight of the machine as we add parts so it don't fall on us during assembly. Remember, safety first. The tools we're going to be using today is pretty simple, about anything you'd find in Grandpa's toolbox. We're going to use an assorted 9mm to 22mm standard Craftsman socket set, a good old 10 inch crescent wrench, a pair of pliers, a screwdriver for line up methods and to tighten various products up, a punch to drive your pins in, and a good old hammer. And don't forget about your pry bar when stuff just ain't going your way. And remember, this is not a big ordeal to put together. It's very simple. Your child, as he assembles his Lincoln log set as a, ch as a kid, could put this together with a, a little bit of direction. And y'all be safe out there. Now let's get started. Now the first part of our assembly would be to take our three-point frame and pick it up and line it up with the pin holes on the cutter bar frame. Then we'll drop our supplied pin with it, and then drive a roll pin in on the other end once we get it secured. As so. Now let's get to work. Now get the best driver you can find, or whoever's around. All right, bike, pick up.
Oh, what you got? Now that you got your mainframe to send, remember to drive your roll pin in on the bottom of the pin so it stays secure. Step two will be hooking up the breakaway bar to the cutter bar. Swing it into position. Don't forget about your supplied pin. Pin it up like so. Now keep your cutter bar stationary during assembly so it doesn't get against your PTO guard. When you're driving it in, make sure you've got a good even section on the pin. Half out on one side and half out on the other side. The next step be to install your three-point pins that are supplied with the unit. And the proper way, if you look at the hole, big pin goes in the big, little pin goes in the small. There's a lock bolt on the bottom of the frame to secure the pin. Make sure that the lock bolt fits directly in the holes cut in the pin to make sure it's good and secure and don't slide on you when you hook it to your tractor for operation. Kind of feel for it a little bit. Give it a good wiggle before you tighten it up just to make sure the pin is secure. We'll do the other side, then we'll tighten up the bolt, make sure everything's right. There it is. I recommend a good rule of thumb. Tighten the small one up first and leave the big one loose for now, depending on the size of tractor you're hooking up to. You may have to change it just a little bit. After you get your pins installed and got your bolts good and snug, go ahead and get your tractor around here to get it hooked up to the three point. So you can pick the machine up off the pallet so you can install the bottom skid. Otherwise, you'll never get it on. Now get on Grandpa's tractor, but be nice to her. We'll go get her done. Tractors, oh tractors, they're so much fun. Tractors, oh tractors, they get the job done. Tractors work all day. Tractors Remember to kill your tractor just for safety's sake. You don't want to run over none of them hands you pay minimum wage for anyhow. And after you get your tractor all hooked up to your implement, remember to test for leaks on your hydraulic cylinder when you plug it up into your three-point remotes. You never know, 2,000 PSI hydraulic fluid sure make your day unhappy. And now that we got our tractor all hooked up, we're gonna crank it up and pick the machine up off the pallet so we can put our skid plate on the bottom. Tractors, oh tractors, they're so much fun. Now we're going to use our pallet as support just in case so we don't get our hands or fingers in the way. Never get under a suspended load because if made by a man it can fail and it will sure ruin your day. We don't want to visit our favorite ER or get a new nickname like Stumpy today. Now that you got your load down and supported on your, the crate that was provided, take real care and pay attention in case your three point of your tractor starts to drop. Try not to put anything under the implement while you're assembling, just to keep all these in line. Next step, we're going to attach our skid plate and our covers to protect the operator from work. It's not a too big deal to do, just a little bit of time. And remember, don't tighten all your bolts up till you have everything assembled. All right. After you get all your bolts tight and your guards on, Make sure the lineup is all nice and even. Make sure all your bolts are tightened up flush to where you crush the washer or at least the bolt is past the lock nut. After that, everything else looks pretty good. Let's move on to putting our curtain rods on, how about? Now 
after you get your curtain rods on, put all your, install your bolts and tighten them all up. Don't tighten them too tight, because otherwise your curtain won't be able to flip over back in front. Just enough to get snug and get past the nylock on the nut. That'll be good. And as you see, on this model, the curtain rod picks up on front and back side for ease of access when you have to change your blades or just you just run over something and you just want to know what it was. The next step would be install your stanchions for your curtain rod, as in the hoop on the end and the downward pieces to keep your curtain from flapping in the wind. And now the next step after you get your hoop on is put the downward supports for your canvas on your frame. Just a 13 millimeter bolt in a little bit of time and make sure your supports are facing inward where the curve's facing in so it don't rip a hole in your canvas. Now if you got all your curtain frame assembled and everything's on and nice and tight, lay out your curtain in a manner like we got it now. And remember, Always have your labels facing up and keep the split towards the tractor end of the machine. Because if you don't get that right, I don't know what to tell you. Now we'll start by spreading it out and covering it over our curtain rods. Get you a hand to help ease installation. It's kind of like making a, a king size bed by yourself while the old lady keeps messing with you. Remember, don't tighten all your zip ties up till you got the last one in. Otherwise, you'll catch hell trying to move it around. Now, if you get the last one tight, remember to cut all the ends off just so it looks better. That's how we do things here at Wright Products. And next, we'll attach your lanyard to release your safety catch where it's in the travel position. Make sure you always tie a knot on both ends of the handle so you're not in your tractor chasing your handle down the rope. Loop it through the lanyard hole. And put you one of them good old Girl Scout knots in it. And I like any excuse to use my pocket now. Good and secure. And put your lantern up towards the cab of the tractor for easy access. I like to just loop it over the fender myself because if it catches on something, you'd be in a bind. And the next step would be to install your drive shaft. You got to get real close with her and make sure you get a good, nice, solid click when you're on and a solid engagement. Always hook up your safety chains to keep your shield rotating in the right direction and keep from chains flying off or hitting body in the face. Now that you got your ranch right disc cutter put together, go have and enjoy yourself a nice cold one. Or hell, we're burning daylight. Let's get out in the field and see what this baby will do. Thank you for joining me today as we got more familiar with your new ranch right farm equipment. And remember to grease all pivot joints and check all bolts for tightness after your first couple runs. And don't forget to spay and neuter your animals to control the pet population. And hell, join us next time where we'll take her out in the field and see her what she's really made of. And y'all just have a good day. Come back next time, you hear?